right, Asada's back again. She hasn't been in one of my videos in a while, but she wanted to come back through and be my assistant today while we do some unit conversions, okay? I was earlier, but I just wasn't in the camera. Right, you know, you just weren't in the camera. You're right. And where are my manners? Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and tonight we're doing unit conversions, all right? These, this skill was requested uh, by one of my former colleagues and one of my classmates at the great Lincoln University when I was in graduate school. That's why I went at the Graduate Center in downtown Philly, 30th Street. All right, but anyway, um, she has a student that's having some issues with these. So this is the purpose of this video. All right, so first thing is, I got one, two, three, four, five. I got five examples up here, up here, right? So I want to be able to convert. I want to convert meters, 345 meters, into centimeters, okay? And then I want to convert 7.2 gallons into quarts. And then I want to convert 0 0.145 grams into milligrams, and 22.5 yards into feet, and last but not least, 96.25 inches into yards. So there are a lot of ways to do these problems. Right? Mm -hmm. One thing you should think about is what is the conversion rate or the conversion factor. And a lot of times you'll have like a chart or a reference page that basically, ju basically just lays out all of the different conversion factors. Right? For example, you may have a piece of paper that just tells you that because of this letter C, this letter C stands for centi. Right? This M is meters. So that's centimeters. Right? So... The cent a centimeter is one hundredth of a whole meter. So what that means is this, that there are 100 centimeters in one meter, or 100 centimeters equals one meter, right? So that's the conversion. So there's one way to do this. One way to do these problems is just to say, if you know this conversion um, statement, you know the conversion from centimeters to meters. You know that 100 centimeters is in a meter. That means that for every meter you have, you have 100 centimeters. So that means if you had, um, if you got 345 meters, that means that one of these meters represents 100 centimeters. Right? So two of these measure meters will represent 200 centimeters. Three of these meters will represent 300 centimeters. Four of these meters will, will represent 400 centimeters. And so on and so forth. Right? So one way to do it is you just say, okay, well, how many, how many centimeters are in one meter? In this case, 100. And then you take that number and you multiply it by the number of meters. So we can just do 100 times 345. And I can do the mental math because this number ends in zeros. So basically, I just attach two zeros to 345. And I end up with 300, actually not, not 300, 34,500 centimeters. Right? And that should make sense because a meter is a bigger unit than a centimeter. So since a meter is a bigger unit than a centimeter, it would make sense that it takes more centimeters to equal a smaller amount of meters. It takes more centimeters to equal a smaller amount of meters because a meter is bigger, one meter is bigger than one centimeter. All right, so it makes sense that it would take 34,500 centimeters to equal 345 meters. Another way you can look at this is like in terms of a proportion, in terms of a proportion, if that makes more sense to you. You can think of it as two fractions set equal to each other and then you could do some algebra to figure out what this missing value is. So what you could do is, and I don't really have a whole lot of space, but I'm gonna just write it down here under this problem. No, I'm gonna write it up here. So if you say, okay, well, if there are 100 centimeters in one meter, 100 centimeters in one meter, that will look like 100 over one. What's that equal to? I wanna know how many centimeters are in 345 meters. So I don't know how many centimeters that is. So I put an X on top. And then I put 345 at the bottom. And now I have a proportion set up. Now, Asada, you probably heard me talking, tutoring people, doing lessons on proportions before. 
When we have proportions, don't we just cross multiply? You don't remember? Well, you don't know. You might not know. All right. I was just checking. So 100 times 345 is 34,500. And x times 1 is x. So this would actually be x times 1, which is x, which is equal to 100 times 345, which is still 34,500. And uh, you've got to write the units. So 34,500 centimeters. So that's how we do conversions. But you have to start with like some type of chart or a reference, which is the conversion factor. You have to have the conversion factor. Right? You have to know what's equal to what and how much of one thing is equal to something else. We got to know that. If we don't know that, then we can't do these problems. And that's something that you can memorize over time as time goes by. Or something that if you don't have it memorized, which is fine, don't beat yourself up over that. You can just have it written down on a piece of paper. Like Personally, I don't have all of the conversions uh, memorized, but I know how to find them. I know how to access the resources and access the references. I can go find them. I can go get them. And then I, but I know how, and then I know how to use them once I find them. All right. Now let's look at number two. Seven point two gallons equals how many quarts? So first thing we should be thinking about is first you think about what's the bigger unit. Are gallons bigger than quarts, or are quarts bigger than gallons? Think about a gallon of milk versus a quart of milk. Right, a gallon versus a quart. A gallon is bigger, right? Yeah. A gallon of milk is bigger. So the thing is, we want to know how many quarts are in a gallon. There are four quarts in one gallon. All right. Quart, a giveaway for that, a quart is like a quarter or a fourth. Quart, the beginning of the, the word quart is like the beginning of the word quarter, which is one fourth. Right. So there are four quarts inside one gallon. Now we can take this information and figure out how many quarts are in 7.2 gallons because if there's four quarts in one gallon and we're kind of using the transitive property if there are four quarts in one gallon then we're saying how many quarts are there in 7.2 gallons if there are four quarts in one gallon then aren't there eight quarts in two gallons and aren't there 16 quarts in three gallons and it goes on and on and on. It's going to be 20 quarts in four gallons. But couldn't I just do four times however many gallons to get the number of quarts? Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. Four times three is... Oh, I'm tripping. That shouldn't be a 16. That shouldn't be a 16. That should be a 12. So you always got to check your work. Always. Always check your work. Right? Four quarts, 12 quarts is only three gallons. So I could do this. I can say there are four quarts. I can multiply four by 7.2. And what is four times 7.2? Four times seven is 28. And then four times 0.2 is 0.8. So we would have 28.8, right? That's two tenths. That's going to be, yeah, eight tenths, right? So this should be 28.8 quarts, all right? And that makes sense that the number of quarts will be bigger than the number of gallons because a gallon is bigger than a quart. So it takes more quarts, more quarts to equal the same amount of gallons because gallons are bigger than quarts, all right? Same thing down here. This is more similar to number one, right? We have grams and we have milligrams. Grams and milligrams. Now, milli, the prefix, stands for 1,000. Or really 1,000 in this, in this scenario. So basically, there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram. So 1,000 milligrams equals one gram. 1,000 milligrams equals one gram. So if 1,000 milligrams equals one gram, then that means that we can multiply 1,000 by this number to get how many milligrams are in this many grams. So we do 1,000 times 0 0.145. What's that dot? This dot? Good question. Good question. This dot represents multiplication because when we get to algebra, we don't want to use x for multiplication because we use x for a variable. 
so we don't want to get confused between whether the x is being used as a variable which represents a value that we don't know that we're going to figure out or whether x is used as a multiplication sign so we just use a dot or sometimes we just use parentheses we'll talk more about that later so 1000 times 0.145 that's three zeros so this is equal to 145 so that's 145 milligrams, which should make sense because a milligram is smaller than a gram. A milligram is one thousandth of a gram. Like if you took a gram and cut up it, cut it up into a thousand equal pieces, you would have each piece would be one milligram. So that's a lot. So one milligram is a lot smaller than a gram. So it makes sense that it would take more milligrams to equal less grams. And this is 0.145 grams. This is not even a whole gram. So it makes sense that it takes 145 of these to equal an amount of grams that's not even one whole gram. Not even a fifth of a gram for real. Right? Because that's not even 0.2. So it should just, it should make sense to you. Once the math starts making sense, then the formulas don't feel so overwhelming. Right? But the concept should, should make, start to make sense to you. So now, the last two problems. Number four and number five. Right? So we have... What's this aside of 22.5 yards, right, mm. is equal to how many feet, right? 22.5 yards is equal to how many feet, right? So, first off, which is bigger, feet or yards? Mm. What do you think? Feet. You think so? You're not really familiar with yards, are you? Right, that's why you would say that. A yard is actually three feet. A yard is the, like, the measurement the basic measurement on a football field. All right. A yard is made of three feet, so a yard is longer than a foot. All right. So let's write that down. Let's say three feet is equal to one yard. Three feet equals one yard. All right. Now, if three feet equals one yard, then how many feet would equal 22.5 yards? We do multiplication like we did in all these other problems. So you multiply three times 22.5. What's 3 times 22.5? 3 times 22 is 66. And then 3 times 0.5 is 1.5. So that's 66 plus 1.5. So that's 67.5 feet. And again, this makes sense that there will be more feet than yards because a foot is smaller than a yard. If a foot is smaller than a yard, then it's going to take more feet to equal the same amount of yards. Does that make sense? Uh. Keep it real. Not really? Yeah, I got to figure out a better way to explain this. Because if you don't really understand, if you don't fully understand it, then there's probably somebody watching that don't fully understand it. So I'm going I'm to work on that. I'm going to work on that. Because I want everybody to understand. All right? Yeah, I need, I need everybody to understand. So it's kind of like... Uh... Let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, so let's say you had little jars of slime, right? Right? And then you had a whole gallon of slime, right? Would it make sense that it, would it might take 100 little jars of slime to equal a big gallon of slime? But they're little jars, though. So how would the little jars add up to a big... Wouldn't, wouldn't it take a bunch of little jars... A bunch of them, a whole bunch of them, to add up to one big jar? Probably about like 500. How many, 500 what? Big jars or little jars? Little jars. Exactly. And isn't 500 bigger than the number one? So you see what? Does it make sense now? Why if they're little jars, like for example, feet are smaller than yards, right? Like a foot might be like as long as my foot, right? But a yard is like three of my feet. Don't look at my feet though, they ask you. <laughs> right. So, but one foot is smaller than a yard. So that means that it takes more feet to make a yard, right? Uh, Just like it takes more, it takes a whole bunch of little jars of slime to make one big container of slime, right? It depends on what type of little jars you're talking about. But they're smaller than the big container. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Last but not least, now we're doing inches and yards. Now. What is bigger, inches or yards? 
Exactly. Yards are bigger because inches are smaller than feet and feet are smaller than yards. So, you know, you're using deductive reasoning a little bit, right? All right. Now, so we have, we have to ask ourselves, how many inches are in a yard? But actually, this goes the other way because now we're going from, we're going from smaller units to bigger units. Where in all these other ones, we went from bigger, we went from bigger to smaller, bigger to smaller, bigger to smaller, bigger to smaller. Now we're going the other way. Now we're going from smaller to bigger. That's significant. Smaller to bigger. That makes a difference. So now we're saying, okay, how many yards are in an inch, or how many inches make up a yard? So I know that 36 inches is equal to one yard. I know that because I know that there are three, there are 12 inches in one foot, right? There are 12 inches in one foot. And because it's 12 inches in one foot, it's also three feet in one yard. So you do three times 12 to get 36, right? It's 36 inches in one yard. So now what I need to do is I need to, because I'm going smaller to bigger, I need to actually not do multiplication. I need to actually divide. Because I'm going smaller to bigger, I divide. When I'm going bigger to smaller, and these are all the tricks that you pick up and the patterns that you recognize when you just do a whole bunch of these problems, right? If you're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you divide. If you're going from a bigger unit, like yards, to a smaller unit, like feet, then you multiply, right? So now what I'm gonna do it. It's just wild. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, let's see, 96.25 divided by 36. Okay, so this is the part where I ask you to go run over there real fast to the table and go grab my calculator okay. and bring it back real quick with your lightning speed. Thanks, sis. So now we got 96.25 divided by 36, which is equal to, and I'm gonna round it to two decimal places because that's that has two decimal places. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say 2.67 yards. And this makes sense, right? Because this is the bigger unit. A yard is bigger than an inch. So it makes sense for there to be less yards than there are inches. So just keep this in mind. Keep this in your notes. Smaller to bigger, in terms of the units, you divide. Bigger to smaller, you multiply. Right? But you have to know the conversion factor. And the conversion factor in this case was there are 36 inches in one yard. Because there are three feet in one yard, and there are 12 inches in one foot. So it's 12 times three to get 36 inches. And I know, I understand, it's a lot to know, but a lot of this comes with just years of experience. Um, but if you don't have that experience and you can't just spit it off the top of the dome, then just get it written down. Get it written down. Um, you should have like some type of reference sheet that you can access on the internet or um, in the back of a composition notebook, the same place where your, your multiplication table is. And then just have it written down so you can like refer to it. And then over time, it will become second nature to you and you'll have it memorized. Just be patient with yourself. Trust me. All right, so that about that about wraps it up. And I just wanted to do some, some conversion problems because uh, sister reached out to me and asked me if I could. So I hope that uh, this was helpful to her. And um, this will be on my IGTV, even if she's not able to see it. And anybody else to watch, I hope you, I hope you picked up on something. And... You know, Sada just wanted to be in the mix, you know, because that's how she is. But um, at any rate, thanks for tuning in. And again, happy birthday to, happy 95th birthday to Omawali Malcolm X. Right, right. 95th birthday to Malcolm X. And do something to carry on his legacy and carry on his tradition. That's my only suggestion. Peace. <laughs>